to my studio my name is Matthew Palmer and welcome to another watercolor workout today we're going to paint this lovely kind of little waterfall picture with a bit of a, a flowing stream but all done very quickly and very spontaneous let's go through materials we've got a sheet of watercolor paper this is quite a small sheet of watercolor paper one eighth imperial is about the size so it doesn't need to be too big just put a little bit of tape in the corners because that going to fill the page here so this is roughly going to be about 11 by about seven eight inch something like that and then of course over here We've got the palette of goodness. We've got a pencil, a little minimal bit of sketching involved for this one. We've also got, uh, it's good to have a bit of scrap paper just hanging around the side, just to try your colors on if they find that useful. Kitchen paper. We've got the uh, actual water here. And brushes wise, I'm gonna be using pretty much just three off the shelf standard brushes. So I've got a large super point, which is about a size 20, a medium super point, which is about a size 10 and the small which is about a size five or six those three brushes colors wise you can do this with primary colors blue red and yellow primary colors um would work fine but i'm going to be using some natural colors and i'm going to be using the likes of natural blue uh, natural gray i've got the two natural greens green and green light here and then i might squeeze in some other colors as we go through but if you've got natural yellow light if you've got natural red natural blue or something similar you could do this i've also got a plastic card here as well which i'm going to use for one of the tricks for this particular watercolor picture so without further ado let's grab a little pencil here and do a very tiny amount of sketching very minimal amount of sketching what we're going to do is very simply start off with a line quite a dark line that goes across the middle that can be a little bit less than halfway something like that and that's going to come over the edge with a curve now imagine that to be the water that's flowing okay that's the clue here and then what we'll do is we'll do a little bit of a line that goes up like that and a little bit of a line that comes up a little bit further over this time something like that there perfect now what we'll do below is we'll do a bit of a zigzag with lines going up here same from the side, a zigzag. Now, then it's useful, but not essential. If you've got a straight edge or a ruler of some kind, below where the waterfall is going to be, add a few horizontal lines. Not, not essential, but useful to add a few little horizontal lines because there's this problem that some people have with painting water on a clean straight edge. We've then got a nice quality masking tape here, which what I'm going to do with that, very simply, is take little bits of this tape, stick it to my hand, pop it across the top of the water. Sticking to the hand simply removes the stickiness. Little tiny bits of tape then, which are going to go up. We can bend these loosely, and loosely being the key here, you're not going to be precise stick your fingers on it again you stick it to the table or something and then follow the shape of that edge same on that side rinse rinse and repeat rinse and repeat so up here and again just bring it up and as long as it's a bit of a rough edge, I mean, I always recommend getting your fingernails into this and giving it a bit of a squish, a bit of a squadge to get a bit more character, even in the water edge, you know, because it's not going to be perfectly smooth, but certainly where those that that banking is going to be. So that's just a good quality masking tape. Now, I often tell say to people, put the masking tape under the edge of your board to get a tilt. You can see that slope on there. Quite a useful thing to do. And then we can get started. We'll start off by painting in the background. Um, and to be honest, the size 20 brush, not really going to do much painting with that on a small picture, but it's good for wetting the page. So a size 10 brush in the water there, make sure it's clean. It's going to be useful for mixing up a few colours. Um, so if your paints are left in the palette for long periods, you can just add a bit of water to them. So we don't want a huge amount of colours here. But what we do want is a fairly strong light green, natural green light. Green brush. And then the dark green. Now, if you haven't got these colours, you can mix your own colours. 
you can mix your own primary colours but they're there, they're very strong with a size 10 brush, beautiful. Clean that brush really well and then we're going to take a little bit of yellow light or some kind of bright yellow, don't want much of that, just a little bit, it doesn't matter if it's a bit green as well, wouldn't matter too much. That's quite pale. And then over here, we've got natural blue. Now that can be quite strong. That can be quite a deep blue. Perfect. Notice the water's got a bit green, that's okay. As long as it's not really dirty, you can still use it okay. And then, if I take a large brush, I'm just going to use the same water here, as long as the brush is clean. Notice the little wipe on the edge, I don't want to over soak things here. What I want to do is wet the top section of the paper, now this is a nice quality cotton paper. We'll do it twice, we'll wet it twice, down to the masking tape. Doesn't want a huge amount of water on, but if you notice, can you see it's a bit shiny? A couple of coats of water, move your head around, look for the dry patches. Um, with it being a small sheet of paper, that is pretty much, it's enough, it's enough really. Put that brush away there, and then we'll pick up the size 10. Make sure we've washed off any other greens or anything from the brush. Having the tissue to wipe the brush on is useful. And then we'll start off with the light yellow. There's not a huge amount of that light yellow. We're going to twist in the middle. All the time, before you put your paint on your wet into wet paper, tap against the kitchen paper. This will give a bit of light in the sky, it'll give a bit of a distant tree effect. You can see how pale it actually is. Beautiful. Clean brush, really clean brush at this point, and then we're back to the blue again. We'll just mix the blue a second ago, now we're going to use it on the tissue. And we're going to sort of hold the brush almost on a slight diagonal, but more towards a horizontal. I'm going to add a little bit of a sky. Notice the brush is flat to the paper here. Let it mix, let it blend, let it bleed, let it bleed, let it mix. Don't worry if it mixes with the yellow, because that's the idea. We want to go a bit green at the back. So you get that misty forest kind of vibe coming through there, which is beautiful. Really nice. And then we can move on to these colours, the strong green. I've not got to worry about cleaning brushes here, straight into it, straight into it. It's quite a thick colour on the tissue. And then we'll go in again with exactly the same technique, but this time the paint, as you can see, is much stronger. You can use this paint very thick. If you're mixing your own green, this is what more yellow than blue. Um, that's the kind of gist of that. Quite a limey springtime green here, beautiful springtime green this one. Mix it in, beautiful that, that looks really nice. Superb, and then we need to go darker, we need to get darkness in there. I love a little bit of yellow just creeping through, creates an atmosphere, creates a mist. For the for the stronger colour, the, sorry, the darker colour, really being strong is key, honestly. Look, you can see, the paint I'm actually using is actually tube watercolour, this is natural green. Can see it right there so don't be afraid to use the paint really heavy really strong tap it on a bit of tissue beautiful and then what we'll do is we'll give this a bit of a twist with the darkness don't be afraid of strong color here the idea of this twist practice the twist it's like holding a chopstick is to get the colors to mix on the paper beautiful way of working really like to see this as it happens and uh, that is the key Nice and dark, look all the way across that horizon, but then moving up into these misty, slightly blurred trees while the paper is still damp. Beautiful, nice, effective way to do watercolour this. So that's all done with that same brush, but this is where things get a little bit different now because we're going to put that brush away. Size 10, that can go to one side. Pick up the 6, and we need to go darker again so we're going to use that dark green again this is more blue if you're mixing this this natural green is more blue than yellow but introduce some natural gray or if you haven't got natural gray introduce some blue that will go even darker you can see that really you know don't be afraid of dark colors here this is all done while it's damp nice quality paper lets you do this 
So straight in with this darkness, beautiful way of working, getting the dark to mix with the light. You think about trees, they're going to be darker on that horizon, on the edge, the tree line. The same little twist, just slightly more control, mainly across the bottom. So certainly a technique to practice. It all relies on you getting the painting damp here, if I'm being completely honest. There you go. Now, if at any time this is looking a bit dry, a bit patchy, simply clean the brush. Wipe it almost dry. Even squeeze the brush through your fingers. So you get that flat brush and you can just say, I'm just going to feather that out a little bit, blend that in. You've got options, basically. You can try and create that mist effect. That is the secret here. Now, this plastic card is going to come in very useful at this point because I'm going to use the corner of the plastic card to scrape off the paint. Now this really depends on how wet or dry the paper is. So a good time to do this is just at the point of it drying. So what you do is you put lots of pressure on your paper with the corner and you scrape the paint off. Use your fingers to remove the colour and I'm just going to lay this flat because one or two things will happen here. One or two things will happen. It'll either go darker or lighter. Now at the minute it's going to be dark which still works quite nice. If it's too wet it just leaves a dark mark and it shouldn't need much pressure to do this neither. I'm just using my fingers just to remove that excess. Just a few little scratches in the middle, just little vertical flicks. And now it's had a you know a few seconds, moments to dry, it's really doing its job lovely. But just a gentle little flick with a card, it's enough to remove the colour. And then if you're very careful. You can take the tape away. Now I do expect to see a little bit of paint seep in. Watch the back of the tape for, for it uh, going white. That means it's ripping. So you can actually use a hairdryer slash heat gun to ease the process. But it shouldn't need much in the way of... Can you see it's a little bit fluffy in places? That's basically the way it's ripped a bit. Doesn't matter, not, not an issue. The paper will go a bit wavy. It will flatten out once it's completely dry. But that looks nice, that looks good. So now we can start to work on the water, on the rocky areas. Again, using this plastic card. You've still got options here. You've still got the chance to go in with a, a little bit of... a scratch. just to the point of it being dry, but that is a really rewarding and quite effective process, especially if you're new or a beginner to your watercolour painting. But now it's time for the water and the water, we're going to paint the water darker than what you actually think, especially for the movement of the actual waterfall. That's quite key. So don't be afraid of strong colour here you think well this might seem a little bit too dark so you'll see where we're going with this we're going to be using quite a strong blue here so I'm kind of forgetting this one from the sky and started again the paint's quite heavy and then we also want a quite a strong grey as well so we've got a strong grey and a strong blue this is the plan this is the plan the paper is nice and dry at least in these areas here. This bit still, you can see it's a bit shiny still, but here it's fine to work on. Which means we'll start off with the strong grey, still with your size 10 brush. What we're going to do here, we're going to tap on tissue, we're going to really paint this water quite dark. You'll see where we're going with this right up to the water edge, to the tree edge, come down probably slightly past this banking, 
slightly coming past about halfway into there. Clean the brush. Make sure the brush is not soaking wet. We've got the strong blue next, strong blue on the tissue. And that comes down, blending from the grey. Now that is a very dark waterfall. You'll see where we're going with this. As you get to the bottom, clean the brush really well. We're going to slosh around a couple of taps, three or four taps, and then use water to blend this completely away into the bottom area. Now what's important here is that the paper above the paint is still damp because we're going to use the plastic card again. Yes, we are. I'm going to come down in stages from the water's edge, plenty of pressure, come down. Really press it down well, do it in bits. You can see where we're going now, can't you? I'm literally trying to put more pressure on the corner of the card here. So it's actually sort of pointing towards the corner. This is definitely one to practice. It works quite well for a, a flowing stream. We can refine it in a minute too. For that dark water that we added is no longer dark. You can use this as well to add a few like lighter lines across the top. So you can lighten the top. You can bring a few lines coming down. Like almost individuals, but again, it's getting the it's getting the timing right. I keep using my fingers to pull away the excess foot. Just using your fingers to give it a little bit of a... But look how effective that is for a little waterfall. You can see it, can't you? It works really, really well. Now at the bottom where it looks a bit, you know, messy, that's where you come back to your water, clean water, cleanish water, wipe it almost dry. And then you go in and you sort of just have a little bit of a blend. Because what you've done is you've dragged that colour down, you see. So you give it a bit of a tickle like that and you just make sure that things are blending in. Now it's nothing stopping you going back in with the card again and putting a few lines going up. Now if the paint wasn't strong it wouldn't come off like that and it wouldn't look as effective as that but that looks really nice. Beautiful little effect. Now just below the water here that's where we can just put a little bit of movement in the water using the lighter blue so this is the blue from the sky actually still with a size 10 brush it's about the right brush for the job here on the tissue we're going to add a few horizontal lines around here because the water would obviously be still there bring it in there we go the gray that we used in the waterfall i want to dilute that down quite a bit a couple of times, a couple of blobs of water and then a bit of grey going in which, which is more natural in water, it's not always going to be blue, it's only blue if the sky is blue that's the water isn't blue as we know. Clean the brush on the tissue, give it a feather, a blend at those ends should you need to. Keep the lines horizontal here, that's where you put the pencil lines there but look how effective that is and you can spend a bit of time tweaking, refining, fiddling, laughing around, playing around and so on and so on. I love that. It's just such an effective technique. That needs a moment to dry, but so far working well. We're going to paint in the banking next. And while things are drying off on the paper, we can actually do the banking, which we've got the two greens. We're going to add a bit of green there, but rocky texture would be good here. So I have got some natural brown now natural brown is quite strong so watch out for that now if you haven't got natural brown you can mix that brown um, in a similar way you mix the gray so the gray is made from blue with a little bit of red makes purple add a bit of yellow light yellow when you get gray play around with it natural gray is perfect it makes sense to have natural gray because it's such a useful color but you can mix it with primary colors the brown is mix an orange with plenty of red so yellow with loads of red, add a bit of blue and you've got it, you've got it sussed. Still with the same brush on the tissue, one side at a time. We've got the grey as well, we might use the grey but we're going to go brown across the base here, up to the side of the waterfall. Notice the horizontal lines, now don't worry about how strong that is, it'll improve, it will. We'll do the same thing on this side, but I do need to turn it over for this side. 
because I can't get into it easily. Being right-handed, obviously, it would be the opposite for left-handed. Get the brown going right up to the water's edge. Bring it up. That looks really good so far. You might disagree. We'll clean the brush. And then we're going to go for the dark green next. Anticipation is off the phone, right? Nice little experiment to do this. Little exercise to do. Because you can play around with all the lovely techniques using the plastic card. It's amazing what a plastic card will actually do. It does, I'll be honest with you, just take a while to get used to it. Let's just creep a little bit of brown across the top of that water there. I'm going to go green there eventually, but we'll get to that. So we've got green here on the brush. The green mixes in. Make sure you do mix it all together. Leaving the light edge on the top is perfect for using the light green. Now, if you're uncomfortable using a size 10 or medium super point brush, then think about using something smaller here. But just going in with that light green. I'm going to leave a very thin white edge. You'll see my logic, what makes the colours on the paper. We'll come back to the white edge in a minute. Make sure it all blends in. Can you see? Go right over, re retrace the steps. Make sure this paint is all fresh because the card is going to come in to play in a little moment. So this is a bit of a grassy banking. Obviously, that's the idea here. Again, leave that edge. And we'll just go in with water. Kitchen paper. And then water goes in. And this water goes in. To make sure everything was blending in. So can you see how I'm going back over the... Clean the brush again for this side. Going back into the brown. So the idea is that you're dragging the colour with this tip of this damp brush, whether it's this brush or a smaller one. But at the same time, I'm wobbling the board to see where the paint is active. It needs to be active for it to work. And then there's one final job here before we do some card. Pick up a size 6 and get yourself a strong grey. Again, you can mix the grey, but don't be afraid to use it quite heavy. That's very thick, juicy, look at the brush, juicy colour, really strong there. And the idea here is to just give it a little tickle on there, but get real dark underneath where the water would be coming over and down here. So actually putting shadows in for the first time. We will revisit this with some shadows before we progress, but just to make sure things are nice and dark, even darken the edge a little bit. Uh, there. Um, and again, one final time, clean the brush on the tissue and just smooth everything in, make sure everything's fresh, make sure the paint is all fresh, go over it because this card technique doesn't work if the paint is uh, dry, so you need it to be fresh paint, which it is. So now we can do the good stuff with the plastic card and again it's up to you what card, I mean this is, you can probably work out what card this is, but one to practice, one to practice, what you do is you put your weight on the corner of the card, on the corner of the card, and you go up, a bit of pressure, and then you ease the pressure off as you go away. Wipe it on tissue, from the water's edge. Really nice effect, wipe it off, and then you could add, you know, as many as you want, so it's like a cliff edge, a rocky edge. It's quite addictive. Notice how the brown paint is leaving a stain because that's more of a staining colour than the green and the grey. The greens and the grey. But a beautiful trick. Isn't that nice? I love it. We'll refine that in a second. For this side I've got to rotate the board but it just shows you how I would be doing it um, on here. So from this corner here. right even on a little bit you can just use the corner of the card the thing to watch out for is on these big areas what I'm doing here these big rocky areas Look how effective that is watch out for um, thin lines try and use the 
this bit of the cord. That's the trick. Do practice it. Pick up the size six brush here, just in the water. Doesn't matter what water on the tissue, and then you can go in and just refine and play around with the colours. Smooth it in, and then you can. I mean, it looks great. And then we can reflect this. You see, so. You've done the hard work, it's nice to do this. You can refine it if you need to, and we might refine it as well. But I don't think it wants much refinement here because it's looking really nice, yeah? It's like a six brush, just we're going to reflect basically. Uh, we'll start off with the brown, we've got the colours we need. A couple of taps, and you'd imagine horizontal lines to reflect the water. That little tap on tissue gives you much more control, you see. Again, I would probably, if I was painting this, turn it over. But that little bit of a tap on tissue, you can start to use the texture of the paper. This is what we call the not surface paper, which is not rough and not smooth. And that looks stunning. I mean, already you've got, you've got the reflection, but we can add a bit more to this. I always think, I always think with this kind of technique that it's good to have a bit of grey at hand. It's really up to the water's edge. Did you notice the tap on the tissue? You can reflect and just, just add a bit of shadow. You can even bring, so it's going from horizontal lines across the water's edge. Doesn't want much. But then you can even bring that grey, and this is the real strong grey, you know, that we were using earlier. This is the real definite heavy grey. You can even start to pull that into the into the base of the rocks a little bit here. But it's really quite a clever little trick. And this, you know, we've used plastic card a load in this. And you think to yourself, plastic card, you know, it's, it's, but it, it does, it works, it, and it works well. It's a nice little trick to do, but it does take practice, and you'll discover that. Um, once you have a go yourself, but what you're losing, you're losing 30 40 minutes worth of painting. I'm rotating the board to make sure I'm getting real darkness where I need real darkness, like for example, across this water's edge here, even across the top of the, the trees a little bit. Because the darker we are there, the better we are there. More. Natural grey or mixing your own natural grey is designed to give depth. It falls away using some of the other off-the-shelf greys, Payne's greys, natural, uh, sorry, neutral tints, lamp blacks. These no, don't do yourself a favour. Do yourself a favour. Avoid. But look how I'm sort of skimming the surface of the paper. And even just a few little dots around the base of the water. Isn't that grey? Just to give a bit of a, almost like a frothy, bubbly water effect. You don't want much. They're effective. They're effective. Those little spots, I would simply clean the brush on the tissue. And just give it a quick waft with water and then have a moment making sure that everything's nice and dark across that horizon maybe you crept under the tape a little bit when you put the background on well now you've got time to do it but all in all a lovely little trick and for me i'd finish this picture off I'd, i would finish it off by simply going in and just doing a little bit of dry brush work just to give a bit of texture to the painting that's what it wants just a little bit of foreground detail we've got the colors we're going to use a pale blue so sort of use either either blue that we used if using a thicker one add a bit of water to it obviously but if you do a dry brush which is on the tissue you can quite happily go in and you can do horizontal side to side lines works really well you could even do a little bit of that in green the lighter green but not as strong as it is there so add water Add tissue. What will that do? That will just give a reflection of some of the trees at the back. It'll sort of marry the picture together. Little horizontal lines. Just using a very pale green. Keep the lines nice and light for that. 
allow the paint to mix on the paper. It makes a vignette and that green somehow just connects the pictures together. And I think it's nice just to give it a moment, let it dry. You look back at it, get yourself a cup of tea, come back, look at it with a fresh eye once you've had that moment to see it from a distance. But all in all, that is a finished watercolour workout and a very enjoyable little project to do. So thanks for watching, take care. And as always, I'll see you soon.